Hello, I will solve a spring problem using finite element analysis, but first let's have a quick look over the basics of finite element method. By the way, finite element analysis is a numerical method for solving problems of engineering and mathematical physics. It is used for complicated geometry loading and material properties where analytical solutions cannot be obtained. Uh, softwares such as ANSYS uh, solve such problems by meshing the element, which means divide it into sub-elements. As we are going to do here, but of course on a small scale. Uh, for example, here the element uh, here we have this element E. The beginning point is node one. The second point is node 2. These nodes are called local coordinates because they are within the same element. Here the element is linear approximation. For this reason, we have uh, just two nodes. Now suppose that we have these sub-elements from element 1 till element n. Here are the global coordinates till n plus 1. Now within each element, there is a local coordinate 1, 2 for each element. Let's take this example. It consists of three springs of stiffness K1, K2, K3. Here we have fixed ant here also. These two, uh, these uh, three springs are connected to one node. This is considered to be one node. Uh, here we have rollers. And uh, this node is applied to a force to the, to the right direction. So first, we have to, uh, to identify the global nodes. Here we have, okay. here we have global node. 1, global node 2, global node 3, and global node 4. Okay. As we know, that uh, K, the stiffness, here we have it in matrix 4, multiplied by the displacement is equal to the force F. Now we have to study the finite element method on each element. Let's take the general form finite element method on element E. Okay, here we have K E. We take it outside as common. Here this matrix of plus one minus one, minus one, and one. Multiplied by u1. Here is this one refers to the node in element E. And here u2 of from node 2 in the same element E is equal to force on node uh, 1 from element E and force on node 2 from element E. If we want to draw it, here is the spring. element E 
on this side we have f1 because here there is node 1 and node 2 regardless the global uh, nodes so f1 from element 2 and because here is a spring so the force should be to the right on this node and f on node 2 from element a okay here is the general form now we have uh, we have to apply this general form on each element so instead of e we have to place uh, k1 u1 from element 1 and u2 from element 2 similarly here force on node 1 from element 1 and force on node 2 from element 1 Similarly for uh, element 2 and element 3, I will, run, I will write them. Here we did the finite element method on each uh, element. Uh, now we have to do the assembly. There is a simple way to, uh, to do the assembly. First, uh, in order to know the size of the matrix, we have to, um, uh, we have to do this simple calculation. Uh, we have four nodes. Time is, a degree, time is the degree of a freedom, freedom here is 1. So the matrix size is of 4 times 4. We have a matrix of 4 times 4. So here. Here is the matrix. Here, column 1, column 2, and column 3, uh, column 4, here also. Okay, on uh, rows also, we have row 1, row 2, and row 3 and row 4 so first let's start uh, with the first element first element is located between global node 1 and the global node 2 so the space we have to work on in the assembly is between 1 and 2. It's here. Here is the space that we have to work on because it's between uh, global node 1 and global node 2. So let's start. On element 1, we have k1 minus minus k1 minus k1 and k1 here let's move to the second element element 2 element 2 is between global node 2 and the global node 3 so the workspace that we are the space that we have to work on in the assembly here is between 2 and 3 here is our space so we have plus k2 here minus k2 minus k2 here and k2 similarly for the last element mm, okay here is the last element 3 last element 3 is between the global node 2 and global node 4 so it should be here here, here, 
on this and this cross. So we have here plus k3 minus k3 minus k3 here and plus k3. Okay, now the rest are zeros. The empty carose are zero. This matrix should should be uh, should be symmetry. So here we have minus k one minus k one zero zero. It is symmetrical. This matrix is multiplied by the displacement. Here, in order to set the displacement, we have to look on the figure. On the global node 1, here on the first part, we have U1. The product of these two matrices is equal to the force of. In order to know this matrix, we have to look on the figure on the global node 1, we have force on node 1 from element 1. So, force on node 1 from element 1. On the global node 2, we have more than one force. We have force on node 2 from element 1, force on node 1 from element 2, and force on node 1 here from element 3. So, F1, 2, plus F1, 3, plus F2, 1. On the global node 3, we have force on element 2 from... from uh, on not 2, sorry, from element 2. So, 2, 2 here. On the last global node 4, we have force on, on not 2 from element 3. Okay, now... Uh, here, the displacement on the global node 1 is 0 because it's fixed. So, here we have 0. Similarly, on the global node 3 and the global node 4, we have 0 here and 0 here because these are fixed ants. Now, the forces, because we have here uh, these forces P to the right direction and these forces are to the left then the sum of these forces is equal to P okay now we can set this equation because we have here zeros so we can multiply this row by this column K1 multiplied by 0 is 0. Uh, this term multiplied by U2, U2 and these two terms multiplied by U3 are zeros. So we just have this term multiplied by U2 equal to the force of P. So K1 plus K2 plus K3 multiplied by u2 is equal to p. Now let's solve this, uh, these other uh, two. Uh, let's solve the other equations. Uh, minus k1 this row times this column 
is equal to F11. So minus K1 multiplied by U2 is equal to F11. Similarly, the third row multiplied by the, by the column we have minus K2 multiplied by U2 equal to F22 minus K2 multiplied by U2 is equal to the force on not 2 from element 2. The last row multiplied by the column, so minus K3 times U2 is equal to the force on node 2 from element 3. Here is the first equation. Second. Oh my god. Second, third, and the fourth. Here I have to mention something related to the uh, type of the force. Uh, here, because we have F1 on node 1, uh, so and here we have negative sign, so this force here is considered to be tons a tension force. Okay, because it's on the on the left side, and the uh, and the sign is negative. Here, the force is compression because it is on the right side, not on the left side, and uh, it is negative. So when the force is on the right side, the negative sign is considered as compression, and the positive sign is tension. On the left side is the opposite. I mean, on the left side, when we have negative, it means tension, and positive is compression. Similarly for the bar, because bars and uh, springs act the same. Here, if we have this spring, this force is in this direction, and here the force is in the same direction. Similarly for the bars. Uh, this condition is uh, different on, um, on, thermal, uh, on thermal problems because suppose that we have here a thermal, thermal uh, problem and here is this resistance. Q here on this side, Q1 on element E on this, on the uh, right side, we have Q on node 2 from element E in the different direction of the bars and the springs. Here we have bars or springs. Okay. Here we have thermal problems or flow or fluid. Okay, using these equations, we can uh, we can find the displacement u and the forces. Okay, that's it for this question.